The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greetings reach my ear, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believes that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things and the rich sent empty away. He will come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise that he made to our ancestors of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have a very special feast, the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. And, and it's one of those feasts that goes back to ancient times, but was only really proclaimed solemnly in, in modern times. So from the second century, and the fourth century, and the sixth century, there, there were already biblical writers and, and theologians and biblical scholars who were talking about Mary's Domitian or Assumption. And the doctrine has, has two parts or, or two variants to it because the Eastern Church speaks about the Domitian of Mary. That is Mary falling to sleep and then being raised bodily into heaven. The Western Church speaks about the assumption of Mary, Mary raised bodily into heaven. So whether it's the Domitian or the assumption, the, the doctrine actually never defines whether Mary dies and is assumed or whether she falls asleep and, and is assumed. What the, what the doctrine said is, is when her time of earth had ended, God assumed the body of Mary assume Mary bodily into heaven. And that's what the doctrine speaks to. You know, we, we're living in a, in a strange age where things that we took for granted, people are no longer willing to take for granted. You know, there's a, a young woman who did a video on the Trinity and, and she's saying, where in the Bible do they talk about the Trinity? Show me where it is in the Bible. Well, no, it's, you know, it's not in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible it says, and, and God is three persons, yet one God. That's nowhere in the Bible. But you know, if you ever watch the, the, the great detective stories, Sherlock Holmes, Columbo, more recently Knives Out, you, you, you see the great detectives don't start by, by seeing the facts before their face. What they start by is a series of clues that lead them to a conclusion. And, and in many times, that's how the, the different doctrines of the church emerged. So they might not be written in the Bible, but it's a series of clues that lead us to a conclusion. So today, yeah, put on your seatbelts, rock back, and, and, and let's go through what the church teaches and why. You know, if I went to a river lime and I, I took this, this chalice with me to the river lime 
and I wanted to use it to drink rum and coke and I took the ciborium and I wanted to have I don't know doubles or pillow or something in it you all would think that I went absolutely crazy didn't you <laughs> why because these are called sacred vessels there's a reason why we call it a sacred vessel we call it a sacred vessel because it contains that which is most precious the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that which was wine becomes the blood of Christ that which was bread becomes the body of Christ we understand that the sacred vessel the chalice and the ciborium are to be used only for very sacred and holy occasions for the Eucharist when 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 the priest prays on the on the bread and the wine for it to become the body and blood of Jesus we understand that and I'm asking you how much more sacred is the body of the one who contained the very substance of God itself the one who contained the Word of God the one who contained the 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 the, the manna that came down from heaven the one who contained in her womb God how much more sacred that vessel is than the vessel of the chalice or the ciborium how much more sacred because being gold it, it gives nothing to, to the blood of Christ it gives nothing to the body of Christ but being flesh and blood Mary's body produces and gives everything that Christ's body is it all comes from her body how much more sacred is Mary's body than our chalice and our ciborium so let, let's start there and, and we understand that, that God that we would not discard this and use it for other secular secular ways and how much more would God honor the sacredness of the body that brought forth into the world his very own son how much more sacred and, and therefore how how would God honor such a body because if we believe that Mary was born without original sin then we have to believe also that that by virtue of her son's death and resurrection that she would be the first of the redeemed because if she's a new Eve then then she would be with the new Adam where the new Adam is in heaven Amen. and that that's the, the, the way in which the church starts working backwards but but in scripture and, and, and walk with me for a little bit in scripture we had our first reading today the book of Apocalypse here's what it says the sanctuary of God in heaven not, 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 not the sanctuary of God in Jerusalem or in Trinidad and Tobago the sanctuary of God in heaven open and the ark of the covenant could be seen inside it now a great sign appeared in heaven a woman adorned with the Sun standing on the moon and with the 12 stars on her head for a crown she was pregnant and in labor crying aloud and in pangs of child's birth now I I know about you but 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 the, what I hear here is that the sanctuary of God in heaven open and when the sanctuary of God in heaven opened something happened the ark of the covenant stood inside of the sanctuary the ark of the covenant stood inside of the sanctuary in heaven when the doors of the sanctuary opened and, and the one who had the vision saw into the inner inner sanctum of the sanctuary there stood the ark of the covenant now what is the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant if you're following the daily mass you would have seen the ark of the covenant in exodus when, when Moses went up the mountain, it was one of the revelations that God gave to Moses that he had to make this, this chest. He had to make, make it in a Acadia wood. He had to line it with gold because of its holiness. He, he had to put poles, rings that poles could go through to take, to move the ark around. And, and he had to create on, on top of the ark the cherub, two cherubims sitting there so that when the glory of the Lord comes the glory of the Lord rested on top of the ark of the covenant on top of the ark 
And, and the, when, when Moses had all the best craftsmen do and, and make the ark, what then happened was amazing. Because then it was put into the tent. And in the tent, the glory of the Lord came down upon the ark. And when the glory of the Lord came down upon the ark, Moses could not go in to the tent of meeting. And then when, when, the, when, the, when the glory lifted, then Moses went in, and it was there in the, in the tent of meeting with the Ark of the Covenant that, may, that, that Moses and God communed. I wanted to hear that. The glory of the Lord, that what? Came down upon the Ark. Came down upon the Ark. If you, if you, if you switch now to the, to the Gospel reading, you, you would see, well, in the, in the reading of the, of the Annunciation, you would see where the angel said, Mary says, how will this come about? And the angel says, the glory of the Lord will come upon you. The glory of the Lord, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and rest upon you. It's the same verb that is used there. And so the glory of the Lord came upon the Ark of the Covenant. The glory of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, comes and rests upon Mary. Is there something happening here? Is there something happening here? The, the next verse after the, the Ark of the Covenant, which is inside of the temple, the next verse says, A sign appeared in heaven, and there was a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon with the twelve stars on her head for the crown. She was pregnant and in labor. Well, that's the queen mother, the crown of, 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 the crown of stars. That's the queen mother. In, in, in Israel, it wasn't the wife of the, of the king who was the queen. It was the mother of the, of the, of the king who was the queen. And, and so this is the queen mother. The mother of the king is in heaven, adorned with stars, standing on the moon, dressed in fine regalia. That's, that's Mary. That is Mary. So the scripture speaks about the Ark of the Covenant and then speaks about Mary right after it. But, but John in his apocalypse always uses double images. He speaks about Jesus triumphant and then the Lamb. Then he speaks about the, the ancient beast, the, the, the fiery, the, the dragon, and then he speaks about the beast, the devil. The double images are, are very common in, in the Apocalypse text. So the Ark of the Covenant and Mary are, are spoken about. What else do we know about the Ark of the Covenant? We know that in the book of Maccabees, yeah, yeah, I'm expecting you to be opening your Bible and find, following me, you know. That's what I expect. In the book of Maccabees, second Maccabees, you will see where it is written that the, the, the Ark of the Covenant was taken by, by Jeremiah the prophet and taken to Mount, Mount Nebo, which is a mount where Moses overlooked the promised land. And it was hidden there in a cave and sealed up. And, and although others went to look for it, they could not find it. And, and another place in, in Maccabees, it says that, that when, when the Messiah comes, this is not Maccabees, this is later tradition, when the Messiah comes, the Ark of the Covenant will again return to the sanctuary. So when the book of Revelation says that the Ark of the Covenant is in the sanctuary, it is saying that the Messiah has already come. The Messiah has already come. But, but hold on a little bit with me and, and work with me a little bit more. If you go to Samuel, the second Samuel chapter 6 and following you, you'll see that David in, in retrieving the Ark of the Covenant and bringing it to Jerusalem David goes to the hill country yeah, yeah. David goes to the hill country to to, re, to, for, to retrieve the Ark of the Covenant David goes to the hill country and our gospel says and Mary she went quickly as she could to the hill country of Judah. It also says that the David, when he came towards the ark, he said, I am not worthy to approach the ark of God. I am not worthy. What does Elizabeth say? Well, 
Elizabeth says, Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child in her womb leapt for joy. And she says, Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? When, when David picked up the, when they picked up the ark to move, David cried out in a, in a loud voice. And we have here, and jumped and leapt. And we have here, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Hmm. And, and, and the last piece is that the ark remained in the hill country for three months. And you know what, you know what we leave with here? And, and Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months. There's a parallel in Luke's gospel between how he's writing about Mary and what, what David wrote about the Ark of the Covenant. There's a strong parallel. There are five similarities. Four in Luke's gospel and one in Exodus 40 with the glory coming upon, upon the Ark of the Covenant. The ancient church saw Mary as the Ark of the Covenant. Don't take my word for it. Go to the Catechism of the Church and type in Ark of the Covenant and you'll see there's a little statement. Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. So if Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant and, and the book of Revelation says that in the sanctuary of God in heaven as it opened, the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Well, if Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant and the new Ark of the Covenant is in the sanctuary, in the innermost sanctuary in heaven and, and all could see or, or, or the visionary could see it standing there, then, then we know something already about Mary and where she is. You see, the Ark of the Covenant was made with a special wood, Acadia wood, because it is incorruptible. Hmm. Mary is incorruptible in her body. It was covered with gold because it was holy. Hmm. Mary is considered to be the most holy among women. Not my words, the words of the, of the, of the gospel today. The Ark of the Covenant had three things it contained. The rod that Moses used to hold over the Red Sea. And to, to in other words, the authority of God. The authority of God. It also contained a jar of manna. The manna that was collected. Moses, God said to Moses, take an ephod of, of manna, put it in a glow of uh, golden jar and put it inside of the of the ark of the covenant and the third thing it contained was the law the two, the ten commandments on the two tablets that's that's the third thing that it contained the authority of god the bread the manna and the law the ten commandments now if as you've heard me speak about typology in the, in the New and Old Testament, and if typology is true, then the Old Testament type is only a partial realization of what the New Testament reality is. And if the Ark of the Covenant contained these three sacred and most holy objects for the people of Israel as they walked through the desert into the Promised Land and as they settled the Ark in the Temple, if, if, if this is what is, is most holy, that is contained in such elaborate treasure as the ark, what does Mary contain? The reality. Not, not the type. Not the figure. Not, not, not what points to it. Not, not the bread which is a manna from heaven. What she contains is the living bread that comes down from heaven. If, if, if Mary is the Ark or the new Ark of the Covenant, what she contains is far more than anything that the old Ark contained. She has the living bread come down from heaven. She has the new lawgiver. She has the authority of God manifest here in heaven. And, and therefore in Mary, pregnant with Jesus, what we have is, an, is something more holy than the Ark of the Covenant was. But to get an 
understand the real role of Mary, the, the, the ancient fathers and the scriptures point to Mary as the Ark of the Covenant to help us to understand that Mary in her body is more holy than the Ark of the Covenant. Now, if you understand that, you have to understand now how did the people use the Ark of the Covenant? That's what's important. Because whenever they were going out on, on, on any exploit, anytime they were going out and, and there was serious trouble and serious battle at hand, they would go with the Ark of the Covenant because where the Ark of the Covenant went, God went, and where God went, they won their battles. There was once when the Philistines took the, the Ark of the Covenant and captured it and, and, and took it with them. You know what? They quickly returned it because it brought mayhem to their community. Because that was not, that, their, God was not their God. And so God could not live among them. The, the Ark of the Covenant is taken wherever there is serious trouble. Why, why do you think the church says when you are in times of great distress, you hold your rosary in your hand and you beat those beads until such time as, as, as it gives way to whatever God's will is? Because where the new Ark of the Covenant is, that, is, that too is where God is. And where God is, God's victory is made known and God's victory is made manifest. When the people had to move from the desert into the, into the promised land, Joshua commanded the priests to go and take the ark and stand in the river and, 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 and let the people pass. And as the priests stood in the river with the ark of the covenant, the river became dry. And what was impossible becomes possible. And that's why Elizabeth says, that you know mary blessed is she who believes that the promise made god by her will be revealed that mary is the one who always believes that the impossible promises of god that those impossible promises will become possible M mary is not just a vessel that was used for for the for, for bringing jesus into the world and then discard it Mary is a sacred vessel that contains that which was most present and that which is most precious. Most precious to us and most precious to God. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, was contained in the womb of Mary. To talk about the assumption is to say that the body of Mary is taken up into heaven and that's what the book of apocalypse is saying that there in the in the sanctuary in heaven is is the ark of the covenant the body of mary why is this so important this feast was was proclaimed in the 1940s well in 1950 but in the 1940s the inquiry started 1946 1947 the whole of europe lay in desolation after the second world war and, and the whole body of Europe was desolate and, and broken. And to proclaim that the body of the woman was in heaven is to proclaim that where she is, we also will go. And, and it is to say that, that in the midst of all the desolation that we might see in our world today with coronavirus, and all the desolation that we might have with wars and, and, and tragedies, the, the desolation of slavery that is coming back into our world, the desolation of the high murder rate and, and the desolation that we experience in this veil of tears, that, that no matter what we see in this desolation, the body of the woman is already in heaven. And brothers and sisters, where Mary goes so too does the church go and that's been an ancient formula of the church mary already is everything that the church is destined to become and if mary is already in the sanctuary of heaven the church too is destined one day to be in the sanctuary of heaven with god one of the creeds says i believe in the resurrection of the body and, and, and that is what is prefigured in the assumption that, that already we see in Mary's body entering into heaven. We see also that our bodies are destined for heaven. And it reminds us of our eternal destiny. Brothers and sisters, we have not been created to, to live here upon earth and, and, and to grovel in, in, in all of the challenges that we face on a daily basis. We have been created to be with God in heaven. 
to be with our mother Mary in heaven. We've been created to be part of that band of, of, the, of, the, of the saved who, who, who would wash their robes in the, in the blood of Christ and who would sing glory and, and, and sing Hosanna and, and cry victory is a, is a lamb who was slain and bow before the one of great age and, 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 and bow before the lamb who sits on the throne. We have been created, brothers and sisters, not to, to, to squabble here on this earth. We've been created for victory, and we've been created for heaven. And, and I think one of the great challenges of the, of the Christian today is we've lost sight of why we were created. Why? Who, who made you? God made me. Why did God make you? To love him, to serve him, to be with him in this world, and, and, and forever in the next raise your eyes to heaven where the body of mary already is for that is where we too are destined to be amen, amen.